This case all started with an argument by death row inmates in Oklahoma and Texas who argued the drug cocktail used in their executions were unlikely to cause a quick and painless death, due in part to the fact that drugs were never actually approved for human use. The inmates petitioned the Food and Drug Administration, saying that drugs had been misbranded and urged the FDA to warn drug manufacturers, as well as prison administrators, to not use the drug in inmate executions. But the FDA said no. These inmates in the lawsuit argued the use of these drugs for human execution was a violation of the Federal Food, Drug, and Cosmetics Act and would therefore fall under the scope of the Food and Drug Administration. But the FDA commissioner said the agency didn't have to do anything at all, prompting a legal battle which led all the way to the Supreme Court, which ultimately agreed with the FDA. The question at hand is whether or not the FDA's actions, in this case the decision to not respond to the inmates' request, is subject to judicial review at all. The Supreme Court first looked to the Administrative Procedures Act, which did state that anybody who is, quote, adversely affected by agency action, which would include a, quote, failure to act, is entitled to judicial review. But the Act and the Supreme Court justices point out that if the actions of the agency in question are committed to that agency's lawful discretion, then judicial review is not an option. In his opinion, Justice William Rehnquist broke down the discretion into several parts. First, he pointed out an agency's decision to not enforce a rule was based on the specialized knowledge of that particular agency, the understanding administrators in that agency would have to the cost and use of resources that would be tied up in any enforcement. Second, Rehnquist said judicial review would be actually more applicable if the FDA had chosen to respond in the first place, pointing out that when an agency chooses to not enforce a rule or regulation, it actually isn't exercising its coercive power over individual rights, so no violation has occurred. Finally, in his opinion, Justice Rehnquist compared an agency choosing whether or not to make a decision or use its own discretion to that of a prosecutor in the executive branch. Justice Rehnquist cited the Take Care Clause, saying that the executive must take care that the laws of the nation are faithfully executed. And he said that this is what a prosecutor does when they choose to either make or not make an indictment. The decision boils down to who has the power to review agency decisions and discretion. Rehnquist says the courts aren't the right outlet to enforce agency decisions and states that agency decisions have to be approached with the presumption that they don't fall under judicial review. Justice Rehnquist said the decisions of whether or not the agency actions fall under judicial review would be up to Congress to decide. So in this case, the Supreme Court ruled with the FDA in saying that they didn't have to respond to those inmates' requests. But this case also creates a precedent for all public administrators and public agencies, leaving a road cleared and wide open for a lot of agency discretion. By saying an agency's discretion is presumed unreviewable, the court absolves all agency decisions from judicial review, giving public administrators extreme flexibility in deciding which rules it will enforce and what requests it will take up. And it limits the public's ability to contest agency decisions on the basis of their expertise and discretion. There could be a few exceptions to the rule, though, as Justice William Brennan points out. In his concurring judgment, he says that court decisions would not include cases where an agency flatly claims it has no statutory jurisdiction to reach certain conduct, an agency engages in a pattern of non-enforcement of clear statutory language, an agency has refused to enforce a regulation lawfully promulgated and still in effect, or a non-enforcement decision would violate constitutional rights. Will Whitson, WIS News 10.